my mum was diagnosed in the early 1970s with Allport syndrome when she went into renal failure. When my mum's kidneys failed, I think my sister must have been seven and I was about nine, and she taught me uh, to dialyse her like a nurse, um, so we learnt how to set up her machinery um, and uh, check on things while she was dialysing. Um, and then also take her off the machine at the end because she needed a lot of help with preparing all the kit. Caring for my mum at such a young age, I think, taught us really important lessons about the value of, of helping others and has been an important philosophy in terms of how we've set up the charity. I have three boys, um, two of whom have Allport syndrome, and they were really keen to meet other young people who had Allports. So we got our doctor to put us in touch with a couple of other families, and we met them. And it was transformational because the chat about blood tests and hearing aids felt so normal, and we'd never really talked to anybody else before. I suppose we'd been quite isolated before, so it was the connecting with other families who knew what we'd been going through was so helpful. Um, we really decided on that day um, that we'd really like to try and set up some way of connecting with other families um, so that they could benefit from the same um, connection. The community has grown exponentially. The first workshop was in Oxford and we got a mix of patients, clinicians and laboratory scientists from all over the world and the purpose of the workshop was to collaborate to think about how we could develop treatments for Allport syndrome. Since then, we've done uh, workshops in a number of other countries, including Germany and most recently in Siena in Italy. Well, it's rather unique to have uh, both patients and uh, scientists and the physicians all in one room. I find it pretty exciting. I've been involved in planning and participating in a number of clinical trials that are ongoing in Alport syndrome and I want to know um, kind of what's coming next. So that's important for me to see some of the basic science work that's being done that you know maybe five or ten years away from going into clinical trials but um, knowing that there's a pipeline there is important. I think so inspiration and the talk to the expert and especially talk to uh, many patients come from different countries. I'm just feeling so much more comfortable with myself and knowing that these people share the same illness as me. It's not really common for young people to develop deafness early in life, so the ability to talk to people that have had the same problems, I think that's really important. I think it gives us a real sense of perspective when we come and meet young people with Alport syndrome to understand the disease from their perspective and that to us in research is invaluable. It's exciting to see the lab because you can actually see where the research happens. You don't get to see that part of the process but it's good to have that like hands-on experience, the practical side of it. 还不太会的东西，呃，学到一些可以让自己找到希望，可以让自己找到自己努力的方向，让自己更强大一些，可以让自己可以更承担一些事情。哎，项目 qui per avere delle risposte più che altro sulla sindrome di Alport per capire a che punti sono insomma, gli studi che stanno facendo per le terapie, per lo stile di vita che bisogna intraprendere una volta che si sa di avere la sindrome di Alpha. I think if there were more funding for Alport research, more people would gravitate towards Alport syndrome as a primary research objective.
The more people that get involved, the more people that are attending, the more people that are engaged, the more likely it is that we're going to make progress very rapidly on Alport Syndrome research. We might sit here and listen to what someone's doing and thinking, oh, we can do that, but in a different kidney disease or using a different model. Um, so we can all learn from one another, really. The kind of science that's being presented here will affect kidney patients all over the world in, in some way or the other. I know for a fact that sports and adventures have been my saviour throughout my life. They've given me a reason and purpose to be who I am without allowing Allport Syndrome to define me. Back in May 2019, I set off on a journey to cycle 6,000 miles around Europe to raise £20,000 for Allport UK. And working closely with the charity, we came up with the idea to create the Don't Wait Fund. And the Don't Wait Fund is an opportunity for anyone who's affected by Allport Syndrome to apply for um, a certain amount of money to help with either continuing a sport that they already do or to develop and find a new sport or hobby that they would like to try. Our aim is to connect with the people that don't have national patient organisations. There was a recent project done by an Australian professor and she identified that instead of Allport syndrome being one in 10,000 in a population, actually they found collagen mutations in many more people. So there are an awful lot of people out there who have yet to be diagnosed and the work that we're doing can help patients living with other um, chronic kidney conditions as well. So the really exciting thing about the collaboration is actually uh, we're trying to get people to fill in the different pieces of the jigsaw puzzle, the jigsaw puzzle that will help chronic kidney disease.